On today's show, Bill Nye decides to get into the spacecraft game. Ooh, VR is closer than you think. It's in your browser, all up in there. All up in your browser. Mm -hmm. And the world's first 3D printed apartment building completes construction. But it's not in LA, so I'm still paying really expensive rent prices. Wah wah. It's Tomorrow Daily. <laughs>
Yeah. It's a nonprofit. Amazing. It's tax deductible. Your donation Very I'm sure, cool. is tax deductible. So yeah, super, super nice job, Bill Nye. Yeah, way to go, Bill Nye. Way to back up that street science guy name with actual street cred. Love him. I, so, he needs a hug for me. Tell me about VR okay. and the browser. Okay, so I you know I I'm big into VR you are. and now AR. True. Um, but so everybody's been wondering, like, oh, you know, with the Facebook acquiring, you know, Oculus and, and all this VR becoming popular, yeah, well, how, how is this going to bake itself into our lives? How True. is it not just going to be us dweebs wearing I have wondered that. this, right? So, well, Mo's VR, so Mozilla stepped up and is adding VR to the browser itself. So now you'll be able to, oh. through the browser, use your Oculus and, and explore things. Okay. Now, like content that's been made for exactly. virtual reality. Okay, okay, cool. So, so they've been working. They've been working on this for a few months now. And last week they added uh, core VR support directly to their nightly builds. So basically, so all that's I, the big deal. That's the big deal. So core support. That's core like support. huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, it, basically, all you have to do is install the most recent build, install add-ons to integrate it to the Oculus. Okay. And then open a non-E10 window. Right, so that's a non-multiprocessing window. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Okay, so it's a couple different things, but then, but then after at that point you can, I guess, develop for and experience VR. Like that's in the browser. Like whatever yeah. content's yeah, out there. Yeah, very okay. easily, very easily with uh, that's with, pretty awesome. With Linux support, Firefox uh, and Android and Google Cardboard. Woohoo! Oh, they, that's what they. That's all the stuff they want to do. Oh yeah. Not just Firefox. Uh -huh. They actually want to expand. Oh yeah. Oh, that's sweet. they want to. They want to go all over the place. Um, there's more resources and demos on Mo MoesVR.com's site if you want to learn more about that. Okay. They have six projects uh, currently yeah, we, on their site. Which yeah. is what we've been watching. These are some of the projects from Mo's VR. Uh, they have this is a talk show. You can't see anything because it's super dark. Yeah. But they do this. And obviously like, they they can only show 3D by the the two images next to each right, other. Right. Right. Um, but this is cr really this is crazy. So, like it's like there now. I almost wonder. You know, like I always think about things like PlayStation Home, which was kind of a flop. Yeah. But also a really interesting idea in that can you imagine them relaunch like Sony relaunching PlayStation Home with with Project Morpheus? Yeah. Where it's like you're actually walking around in a little plaza and talking to other people yeah, who are their super avatars. Super kind and of stuff. scary, but kind of weird, but exciting, mm -hmm. and it's scary it's the and exciting. Matrix, basically, yeah, it's scare sighting. It's scare sighting. Scare sighting. Hashtag scare sighting. Scare sighting. Um, so speaking of hashtags, our hashtag of the day Got today it. is TDVR browse, and I think the question is, is that if you could pick your favorite website or what website would you want to experience in virtual reality? Mm -hmm. Why well, cnet.com? I'm just kidding. <laughs> keep it appropriate, okay? Keep it appropriate, internet. Okay. Because we know the internet has some inappropriate places that lots of people would love to experience in mm -hmm. virtual reality. Now is not the time nor place to name those websites. Yeah, let's let's keep, keep it, it keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep so, it classy. So what about you? I think I would love to visit. Um, I I've seen like those prototypes of Netflix, uh, where, but I I kind of love that idea of having that Minority Report experience, like right in front of you on a screen where it's like you're swiping through movies and like you know expanding oh, stuff. Yeah. So I would say IMDb because I love get diving into IMDb and pulling up like trivia about stuff. So I'm watching the movie right here, and then like all of a sudden I can like pull down the trivia and expand that and read through it, and then clo close it up and throw that away, and then pick up like, oh, like I'm watching Guardians of the Galaxy, like Chris Pratt, what else is he in? Oh, Parks and Rec, okay, I'm gonna click on that, and that's gonna start playing. Like, that's what I'd wanna do. You'd never come out. N no. That's why hmm. VR is so scare sighting. I would go to the, uh, the Gorillas have a website, and because oh, it's like so super, good. super like, the artsy, whatever, you basically walk through their studio, but there's hidden things everywhere. So you go into like one of the characters' rooms, and then you'll find maybe like an unreleased track Ooh. in their trash, like on the floor. Can I change my or answer? Or you can, okay. Pottermore. Good, good change. Okay, you, you made but, you made me think of that. But this is this is what I'm hoping will happen with this whole 3D edition is that sites will start to put more work into it, and it'll. It'll become an experience when you go to a website. An experience, and, and I think that's the big thing. An experience, and then people will start thinking about the digital space instead of just, just it being a fleeting thought where you yeah. see one thing and then you move on. And then you close the window and move on. Like It can just be sort of this weird seamless experience where you just kind of float through the internet and find things and just keep moving. Yeah. But not just with one website. So like people get caught in the black hole of YouTube, but it would be for everything that you visit, which is pretty neat. And Ooh, also, truly. again, it's scary. It's a little scary. It's frightening because it's like we don't know how society is going to handle having virtual reality, like such an intense experience. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to see how people sort of evolve and, and change with it and how just 
you know, society in general, humanity reacts to virtual reality becoming a, a really core essential part of our lives at some point, just like the internet became. Because it's an definitely not going away, lives. and that's why you always no. report on the fact that it's it's actually it's here becoming more and more integrated. Yeah. And people are like actually adopting. That's why like when Mozilla That's a big it up, deal. You're just like, okay. And then yeah. also uh, Google is has been working on something too. I was reading I think everybody's working on yeah, something at this everybody. point. And they, they're AR, changing glass. VR. Well they're changing glass. They they stopped the Explorer program. We didn't report on that because that was kind of a bummer. But but on top of that, I'm kind of waiting to just see what they're doing next with it, which they're working on obviously in Google Labs. So we'll see what's going on with Google Glass probably later this year. Okay, this next story has a lot to like yeah, lot 3, to deal 3D, with 3D printed. Okay, oh, so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get through this. So Winsun is this Chinese company that's been making uh, 3D printed buildings for a while now. Like three, they've been um, making like prefab kind of houses and mm -hmm. stuff. So last year they made this claim and said that they we built 10 houses in 24 hours using a proprietary 3D printer that they have. So here we're looking at some of the pictures right now of like this some of their 3D printing and their um, their structures, which is pretty cool. But now now they are showing off a five story apartment building. So it's a it's a that's it. Woo! That was 3D printed. That's unbelievable. Which is pretty cool. Um, so here's the deal with it. Um, it There's has so many questions. It's five stories high, and it, it, it's also got an 11,840 square foot villa in it. So there's Ooh. like not just little tiny apartments. Um, the 3D printer that made this, it's actually an array. So it's, a, it's an array of 3D printers. It is 20 feet tall, 33 feet wide, and 132 feet long. It's huge. Yeah. And well, it has to be because it makes these giant pieces in it in the facility that it's housed in. And then what happens is they take the pieces, as you can see in these pictures, they take those pieces to the construction site and then insulate them and also um, add steel reinforcement and everything to make sure it's up to code. Otherwise, it would be like a house made of Legos, which so would be weird. So some, they already checked it out, and they were like, this is fine. People can live in this. It's to code. Uh, okay. it, apparently to code. Like, it's it's got, it's it's insulated. It's steel reinforced. So it's, it's I would imagine, actually, maybe in some ways better than some of the prefabricated houses we've seen made previously. <coughs> um, this is the interesting part to me, is that the process apparently, according to them, saves 30 to 60% of construction waste. So No way. So less construction waste because you're, you know exactly what you're going to need. Like right. it's not, oh, we bought extra or, you know, we didn't really know. Um, a 50 to 70% decrease in production time because obviously it's a 3D printer. Yeah. And so you're not constantly making stuff. And then also a 50 to 80% decrease in labor costs. Yeah. So this, this entire, like... I think they said the whole building was like it cost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. To make. Did you say how long it took to make it? Uh, I, d I didn't. I don't know if I saw that. Um, I would imagine it. I mean, I'm sure it took them longer than twenty four hours for ten houses. Right. I just want to know, like, compared to an actual. Yeah, house. I don't know. It would be really interesting to see, and yeah. I almost wonder. So this makes me wonder if um, they they have bigger dreams. They want right. to do skyscrapers and bridges with this proprietary 3D printing array, which is which pretty sounds, cool. Yeah, it sounds very Terrifying. scary. Yeah. I don't know that I, again, scare sighting. I think it's the theme yeah, of today's sighting. show, scare, scare sighting. Scare sighting. Um, I don't know that I would drive my car across the 3D printed bridge. I would be really scared. Yeah, uh, but, but in like 10 years, you're not gonna have a choice. It won't even be a yeah. big deal. Like our children or and grandchildren will be like, God, Grandpa Kale, it's just a 3D printed bridge. Nobody cares. Grandpa, put on your 3D printed shoes and let's go. Exactly. You're like, okay. <laughs> you're like get your 3D printed cane and let's leave. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's. I'd, uh, live in a, I'd live in a 3D printed apartment for sure. I think I would, and they said that they were the bridge, able to do. No. They were able to do like details with like all sorts of stuff in the building, like already pre-printed, which is pretty cool. So like molding and stuff like that, like you don't have to add that. I think that's part of the construction cost. You don't have to buy that stuff. You just print it into and the wall. And then if something goes wrong, yeah. And then if something goes wrong in your apartment, like you get mad, punch a hole through the wall. You 3D print a little. Just 3D print a little patch. So print you anger patch management up. people are stuck. Yeah, it's good for you. Yeah, nice. uh, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back with Backer to Hackett. We have a little game we're going to play in, in, with Backer to Hackett. Don't, don't get scared. You look mischievous, and I don't I'm like excited. It. I don't and like then it. we also have uh, your user feedback and, of course, our photographer of the day. So don't click away. It's Tomorrow Daily. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. <laughs> that was a uh, funny we joke. Sharing a hilarious that inside we didn't say. joke. Um, 
Okay, so I went to Pack South this weekend, mm -hmm. and not the only first, the inaugural the Pack inaugural South. Pack South, it was delightful. San yeah. Antonio is a really interesting, weird city. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who live there, Riverwalk is pretty cool. You'd like it. It's like a river underneath all the roads, and oh, there's like yeah. uh, bars and restaurants. Mexican food. The Mex. Okay. Okay, that's kind of. I had some flautas that Mexican. were amazing. Shout out to Rio Rio restaurant. Um, but. Because I was at Pack South, I found something that I thought would be perfect for Back It or Hack It. It just started its Kickstarter, so let's do Back It or Hack It. Okay. You got some books here. We got some books. Okay, so this is actually a game. It's a card game called Bring Your Own Book. Oh, card games. All right. So yeah. it's like a party, like you bring this to a party or Cards whatever. Against Humanity, Apples ah, to Apples right. type of thing. Okay, okay, I'm Jack. Let's see. All right. So how it works is you actually use physical books. So everybody brings a real book. Uh -huh. Whatever kind of book you want, Proust, Nietzsche, Chuck Palahniuk, as I brought today, Chuck Palahniuk. Um, and, uh, okay, so what happens is there's a whole stack of printed cards, and there are two prompts on the cards, and the person who's the judge can choose which prompt you use. Then everybody opens their book, finds a passage that fits the prompt, and then the best one gets the card and the point. So kind of like Cards Against Humanity. Right. Okay. So, um, but, but they do it in the actual game with if somebody finds a selection, they say, I got it, and then a timer starts for a minute, and everyone has to find their stuff within that minute. We're going to do it a little bit differently. I actually spoke to the co-founder of the game, and he gave me some real printed cards, like actual production run cards that you will, these are the cards that you would get if you backed it. Because it's not out it. yet. It's not okay. out yet. Okay. So let's yeah, try this. Let's do this. Okay. So I have Apathy, which is one of my favorite books. It has a lot of swearing in it, but it made me laugh really, really hard. Uh -huh. And then Choke by Chuck Palahniuk, which is also one of my favorite authors. I'm going to read um, this. It's super, you can okay. just take both of them home with okay. you after. Okay. Perfect. So I will. Give me one. Okay. You will, you take Apathy and okay. I'll take Choke. All right. Okay. So we just got our book. So let's go with... Okay, so now we have to find a passage that is... The, is the name of a beauty product. Name of a beauty product, okay. All right, so I'm going to look up um, maybe... Okay, I got one. Okay, go. Mommy. <laughs> Caricatures of the deaf. Oh, ooh, that doesn't sound like it's... What is it, perfume? <laughs> the name beauty of a beauty product. product. I don't like that. That sounds like it'd be a really weird face cream. Oh, God, I'm out of mommy. I need more mommy. mommy. Oh, yeah, God. but mommy is for men. Is it organic? It's for, it, for men. It, mommy is not organic. Not no. organic. Okay. Okay. Let's so do that's more. okay. So that's one. Uh, and then the the drawer would pick which one they thought was was the, the best. Okay. So you guys are going to pick which one was the best out of that. And then you you guys are the are the judge here. So we'll tell you who wins. I don't know how we're going to find out yeah. that because we can't count every comment yeah. in the internet. But we'll feel uh, it. The secret password to a magical cave. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I got one. Okay. So you go ahead. I had lost Suge forever. <laughs> Mine is, my memory isn't any good. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you should win that one just on the All right. Are we, we're doing one more one so more. they can get the, get the idea? Okay. This is so, cool. Wait. Oh, and you're supposed to switch books. Well, yeah, we're supposed to switch books after each one. Okay, and then here's, here's the other thing. So the co-founder told me this particular one is best used with the end of one sentence and the beginning of another sentence. So just FYI, dialogue from a badly translated Japanese RPG. Oh boy. All right, ready? So use, what's the rule for this use one? Use the end of one sentence at the beginning of the next one usually helps make it a little bit funnier. Okay. <laughs> Are you you're good? Yeah. Okay, go. Uh, it had come to, I already had salt. <laughs> Brain dead loser dude that I can live with. Yeah, that one that one works. Okay, cool. So what is this game called? Okay, it's called uh, Bring Your Own Book, and you can do the Kickstarter is on right now. It's twenty two bucks to get the printed pack, but uh, if you're a little broke, that's okay because you can go over to the website and you can email <coughs> and request a download of the uh, Print Your Own Pack. They have a Print Your Own Pack just like Cards Against Humanity. Um, but this is the full like printed deck that they're kickstarting right now. I totally backed it. I like I I love books. I have lots of books in my house, and I also love games like Cards Against Humanity. So this is perfect. For yeah, me. yeah. And it's a fun. We, seems like it'd be a really fun party game. Yeah, and 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 we need some more 
card games that besides Cards Against Humanity. Well, here's my thing. So with Cards up. Against Humanity, it's like you just get used to the same cards all the time. Bingo, and yeah. And when you have people bring their own books over, stuff gets weird. Yeah. It gets weird, you guys. So I like I feel this like this could be really fun. This one involves creativity, too. Yeah, you got to be a little like, creative so. about it. I, I just think it's really cool. So yeah, uh, bring your own book. I, I definitely definitely back it. This is yeah. probably one of the most like exciting, fun ones. That, it's super yeah. fun. It's super, good, super fun. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Good I was job. just, he, I, I just happened to talk to him at PAX South, and then that's it came up in conversation that he was there showing off his Kickstarter game and I was like oh what is it and then he explained it to me and I'm like I have to put this on the show like it'll be on tomorrow Very I talked cool. to him yesterday so <laughs> I was like it's gonna be on the show tomorrow um so yeah that's what it is you can head over there is bring your own book um I dig it so yeah double double back it we highly double highly back it. um he's got to put that on the box yeah from tell us. him to put it on the box put the pull quote from us on the box um with us right, going guys. like like yeah. uh all right guys it's time for your user feedback as opposed to someone else's user feedback, yeah. I don't know. Um, your mom's user feedback. Your mom's user feedback. I don't uh, want you watching that Ashley and that coil. That weird kale man. She doesn't remember my name coil. correctly. Yeah, she's like just coil. coil. Like, that's a name. Coil. Um, okay, so last week we asked you guys to use the hashtag TD class and tell us what class you would want because Harvard did that class about space exploration yeah. and finding exoplanets. Yeah, let's hear it. All right, so Rob emailed us and he said, I would take a class in robotics so I could help design and build companion robots to help the elderly and physically disabled. Rob. Good guy Rob. Yeah, We're going to change great. the meme. It's not good guy Greg anymore. It's good guy Rob. Uh, so it would basically, he wants to build like a C-3PO yeah. type thing. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, Tony wrote to us and said, I want to take a class on how to build awesome killer robots. Hashtag doomsday army. Okay. <laughs> Rob. Bad guy you're Tony. Just, <laughs> you, Rob, you, better, you need to, you need, yeah, this is. Nope. Nope. There's there's gonna be a war between the the like elderly helper robots and the bad robots. <laughs> They're gonna hit him with a Please, I just want to hug you. And the robot's like, die. <laughs> And then Rick wrote to us and said, speaking of, speaking of education, a class about the history of gaming, New Gen needs to know the era of Atari and NES. I like the history of gaming. Oh, it's yeah, fun. yeah. They'd, have to, they'd have to learn how frustrating those games were. I think but we how they force, built you as a better person. I think any person under the age of, like, 15 should, yeah. ha should be forced to, into, when you want a new console like the Xbox One, you should be forced mm -hmm. to beat like Ghosts and Goblins I, on NES. Yeah, it should. Be, you have to beat it in yeah, completion. You can't just play it and be like, oh, this is really frustrating. I think oh. it should be like the draft. But like here, the, like in oh, America, like you have good. to get drafted, but like you have to. You have to play a certain game, mm -hmm. like like the wizard, but mandatory. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And then Matt wrote to us lastly and said, I would like to learn how to pick out clothes like Kale and print out replicas of his clothes. Hashtag printer in a printer. TD class. You're looking very patriotic today. I just... You should have saved this for President's Day, is all I'm saying. It's literally- I was not ready for that comment. Blue pants and a flag shirt. Look, like, it's red, white, and blue all day long. I ran out of the house, and I was like, oh, I didn't wear a shirt, and there was an American flag waving. Instead of Captain America, it's Captain America. And Anonymous, I ran away and like, said, hey, buddy, bring back my patriotism. <laughs> yeah, so, and then he anyway. sent his, his elderly helper robot after you. I'm all about 3D printed clothing. The like second it. that happens, I'm only wearing 3D printed clothes. New shirt every day. It. Shatter it, build a new shirt. Just build a new shirt. Just only have one you get a shirt. hole in it, you just patch it with another chain, like a little link out yeah. of the 3D printer. Spill some ketchup on it, Forget pull it. out that little piece, 3D print a new piece. I like it. Uh, all right, guys, it's time for your very last piece of user feedback, which is, of course, as always, your phone photographer of the day. All right, so David L. wrote to us. And he sent us a lot of pictures, and I have to say, like, I picked all of them. So David L. wrote to us and said, hey, guys, my name's David, and I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. Just found out about your show, and I'm glad to see two of my favorite internet hosts on it. Which ones? Aww. Yeah, I, I wonder who they are. Here's some photos I took from my recent trip to Europe on my iPhone 5. Pick your favorites. Thanks. Um, oh, were, my God. This guy's good. They're, they're I mean, all not that everybody isn't great. good, but. Uh, but. I mean, yeah, no, they're, they're really nice pictures. And then he also says, uh, P.S., hey, Kale, when will we see a return of the zebra cane? 
So he, 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 you are really one of his favorite I new houses. Look at what a dump. Wow. What a dump this is. That's wow. that castle. That's that, that's if that, that famous castle, castle wasn't journey. in the way, this would have been a really great shot. I know. God, oh that castle God. really just yeah. got in the way of all those nice trees. But that was. Oh my I God. Where's this guy live? I picked all of them. I like, just, I couldn't pick a good one. He's I couldn't. in Middle Earth. No, he went to Europe for oh. the summer. It's definitely, I mean, yeah. See, it's like we see stuff like this and we're like, that's not LA. Yeah. <laughs> that looks nice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Most people are like, oh, stupid castle. I hate my life. Way. I can't get, um, I gotta do my selfie stick. Well, David, definitely my favorite viewer. Super good. And Zebra Kane's favorite viewer. Not now quite too. my favorite, but close. Like I would say that was a. I gotta bring Zebra almost. Kane in. You gotta bring Zebra Kane but in. You should have it right the, there. The issue is that he's he asks for a lot of money, and his writer is incredible. His concert it's, writer. It's unreal. It's guys, unbelievable. You wouldn't Zebra like Kane it. is like more demanding than Lindsay Lohan. Also, he only speaks in expletives, which. Inappropriate for this show. Yeah, so there you go. Soups and appropes. But anyway, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. Um, if you guys want to submit your photography to be considered to be featured on the show, you can email us tomorrow at CNET.com. You can also send over your user feedback there. Uh, if you absolutely hate email, we got you covered. We're on social media. We're Tomorrow Daily on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're, you can find us on the YouTubes, uh, Google Plus. We're Tomorrow Daily TV. We're on Tumblr. You, even, you can see your beautiful photography if it gets featured on Tumblr. That's true. You can compare and contrast you and, can see, do that. and see all of my favorite, uh, all of my, my favorite people. But yeah, it's so good. If you're uh, if you're visiting from uh, Middle Earth, don't forget to subscribe to our our channel, our YouTube channel. We accept all bagginses. Yeah, all the all the bagginses, and, and you have to have second breakfast. Yes. Um, but yeah, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Also, if you're listening on iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Yeah, super good. And, and also uh, our personal twatter, tweet twatters, tweeters, tweet tours, tweet tours. Tweet wars. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our personal our Twitter, wars. Twitter t tweet wars. Our tweet places, our tweet tweet houses. Ashley Skeba. And Kale Anonymous. Yeah, and that's it for today's show. You guys will be back tomorrow with a whole bunch of weird, wonderful science, geek pop culture, gaming, all that jazz. Uh, and uh, until then, be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye.